Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we are going to talk about how to model this parametric vase inside of Rhino with Grasshopper. So let's take a look what this looks like. First thing first, I'm going to start a new file. And then I'll type in C, stands for circle, type 0, hit space, and then hold shift. We'll get a circle like this. I'm going to use millimeter here, but to be honest, you can use whatever unit you want. And then I'll select the circle, type in rebuild, make sure that I have eight control points here. And then I will select everything, scale it along this direction a little bit. And also I'll select those four points, scale them. The next thing I'll do is I'll select this, hold Alt, and then drag this up. I'll select those two curves, type in loft, get it. And then I'll type in a roll surface, select this surface, hit OK. We will get it unrolled. I'll move it a little bit, move it around here. You want to make it easier to see, I'm going to rotate it for 90 degree. Place it right here. And then I will type in duplicate border. Delete this surface, go to grasshopper. We will select this curve, go to parameter, bring this curve. And then I will just randomly Put three points here. Select those points by clicking set multiple points. The next thing I'll do is I will go to surface, divide surface, bring it in, and let's take a measurement. From here to here is 1,784. And from here to here is 794. So we will know the ratio. And then this is the ratio of this rectangle. So what I will do is I will type in 22, bring it in, and then I'll type multiplication, bring this, bring this, and then bring it in. So we can get this point grid that's pretty even spread it. The next thing I'll do is I'll calculate the distance in between. I'll just type in distance, bring those three points in, and then bring those points in. I'll first flatten the data structure. We have talked about the data structure many times. I will involve those detailed expand videos inside of our description. And then I will graph this right here. And then we'll get 364 sublists. And each of those sublists will have three measurements. We will use sort list to sort the number based on its value. And then we will use list item to find the smallest number within this list. And then we can use this number as a Z value for those points. I will type in move, bring those points in. And right here, this list has 364 sublists, but this list is a flattened list. So in order to make them equal, I will right click it and graft it. And then I will bring this in and bring this in. This is what it looks like. Right now it's too dramatic. So in order to solve that problem, what I will do is I will use remap. Bring those data in, come over to math, find the bounds, bring in, flatten the data, bring it in, and now default zero to one, this is great. So we will bring it back. Right now it's way too tiny, so we can restore it by choose modification right here. Now 199, and then bring it in. If you are asking why don't we just change the target right here? Well, here is why. We need to keep this from zero to one so we can use a graph mapper to change the distribution of those data. So we'll bring in, bring it here, right click it and choose sign. Then this is what we want. I'm gonna lower it a little bit, hide everything else and then increase the amount of point grid right here. This is what we're gonna get. And then I'll choose a thing called surface from points. Bring those points in flatten them, and then bring this data in. Right-click it, expression, x plus 1. Get it. So let's put more waves into it so we can have a better result in the end. So this looks good. I'll go ahead and uh, bake this surface. Hide it. In order to make the final steps correct, I'm going to select everything and rotate it 90 degree. So restore what we had earlier. The next thing I will do is I will use a command called 
flow along surface. If you want to know more about this command, please check the video inside of our description. Hit OK. Choose the object to flow along. Hit OK. Choose plan. We're going to select from this corner to this corner. And then we will click the target surface from here. So then we will get our final result. I'm going to select this, isolate it. Then you will realize that this edge doesn't really match. It's pretty easy to solve. All I have to do is I will just type in split, choose ISO curve, make sure you click shrink, and then click this surface. If this curve is not vertical, just click direction, make it the other one, and then click it, hit OK. Then I'll delete this surface. I will type in blend, surf, select the first edge, second edge, choose tangency and tangency, hit OK. I will type in merge, surf, select the first one, second one, and then we merge them together. The next thing I will do is I will select the surface, type in duplicate border, and then I'll get this scale it a little bit. I'll move it up a little bit, choose planner, surf. And then I will type in blend surface again. Select the first one, select the second one. You will see that this part is wrong, it's broken. So once we make a connection, it will look like this. In order to solve that problem, what we can do is I'll select the surface, I'll come to surface tools, edge tools, click this corner, and then show edges. So we will see that there is a breaking point here. And then what I can do is I'll go back to this place. I'll click merge edge. I'll click from right here. And then we will get rid of that point. The next thing I'll do is I will type blend surf, select the first, select the second, hit OK. Tangency, tangency is good, hit OK. It looks great. We will select everything, join them all together. Select the surface, rotate it for 180 degree, and then I will hide everything else. The next thing I will do is I will select the surface and uh, go to the front view, control C, control V, scale it down a little bit. This part is overlapping. So what we can do is I'll select the surface and uh, scale it up a little bit, make sure that nothing overlaps. This looks great. And then I will type in blend surface again, select this edge and select this edge. Hit OK. Tangency is good. Hit OK. In order to hide those wires on the surface, we can click this off. And now I will select everything, join them all together. And then one closed poly surface has been generated. I'll select this and type in EMAP. And then we will get this. This part that we blended earlier is still a little bit problematic. You can edit by changing the placement of those points in the first place, or you can change it during the blending process. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial, and I'm looking forward to see you in our next video.